one piece of evidence that I love, I think it's so... Well, there's a couple. One I would derive from Franz de Waal, who's a famous primatologist, and he studied, he studied the prototype morality that emerges in chimpanzees. And it's very much rest nested in their dominance structures, you know, because you could think of morality in some sense as the understanding of the rules by which the dominance hierarchy operates, right? And so you could say, well, the biggest, ugliest, meanest chimp, and, and the male dominance hierarchies in chimps seem to be the predominant ones, although the females also have a dominance hierarchy, and it, it's not quite so clear in bonobos, uh, which seem to be more female dominated. But in any case, um, the chimp, primary chimp dominance structure is male, and you could think, well, it's like the caveman chimp, who's biggest and toughest, who necessarily rules and who rules longest. But that isn't what DeWall found. See, the problem with being mean, let's say, and not, not negotiating your social landscape and not trading reciprocal favors is that no matter how powerful you are as an individual, two, two individuals, three quarters of your power can do you in. And that happens with the chimps fairly regularly. If the guy on top is too tyrannical and doesn't make social connections, then weaker chimps, males, make good social connections, and when he's not in such good shape, they take him down, and viciously too. DeWall has, has documented some unbelievably horrendous acts of, let's call it regicide, in, among the chimpanzee troops that he studied, mostly in the Arnhem Zoo. They have a big troop there uh, that's been there a long time. But he's very interested in prototypical morality. And here's some other examples of prototypical morality emerging among animals. There's many of them. But one is, um, you know, if two wolves have a dominance dispute, that again, that would be more likely among the male wolves, but it doesn't really matter. They basically display their size and they growl ferociously and puff up their hair so they look bigger. And, you know, you can see cats do that when they're, they go into fight or flight, right? Not only do they puff up, including their tail, but they stand sideways. And, and the reason they do that is because they look bigger, right? Because they're trying to put out the most intimidating possible front. So anyways, if two wolves are going at it, they're, what they're really trying to do is to size each other up. And they're trying to scare each other into backing off, fundamentally. Because, see, the worst case scenario is like, you're wolf number one and I'm wolf number two, and we tear each other to shreds, but I win, but I'm so damaged after that that wolf number three comes in and takes me out. So, like, there's a big cost to be paid even for victory in a dominance dispute if it degenerates into violence and animals and human beings, but animals in particular, have evolved very, very specific mechanisms to escalate dominance disputes towards violence step by step so that they don't, so that the victor doesn't risk incapacitating himself by winning. So what happens with the wolves is that, you know, they growl at each other in posture and display and maybe they even snap at each other, but the probability that they're going to get into a full-fledged fight is pretty low. And what happens is one of the wolves backs off and flips over and shows his neck. And that basically means, all right, tear it out, you know. And the other wolf says, of course he doesn't, well, you're kind of an idiot and you're not that strong, but we might need you to take down a moose in the future. And so, you know, despite your patheticness, I won't tear out your throat. And then they've established their dominance position. And then from then on, at least for some substantial period of time, the subordinate wolf gives way to the dominant wolf. But at least the subordinate wolf is alive, and you know, he might be dominant over other wolves. And so everyone in the whole hierarchy has sorted that out through either through mock combat or through combat itself. And you know, the low ranking members aren't in the best possible position, but at least they're not getting their heads torn off every second of their existence. And so there's even some utility in the stability of the dominance hierarchy for the low ranking members, because at least they're not getting pounded, they're getting threatened, which is way better. I mean, it's not good, but it's way better than actual combat. 